The British monarchy has long enjoyed a cosy relationship with the press. This relationship has been carefully nurtured over the years, creating a symbiotic bond between the royal family and the media. The press gets exclusive stories and access, while the monarchy benefits from favourable coverage that helps maintain its public image. A select group of journalists, known as the Royal Rota, are granted privileged access to cover the official engagements and pronouncements of the royal family. These journalists are hand-picked and given the responsibility of reporting on the monarchy's activities, ensuring that the public remains informed about the royal family's endeavours. This access, however, comes at a price. Critics argue that the rota system fosters a culture of deference and silence, where journalists are reluctant to report critically on the royals for fear of losing access. This fear of retribution has led to a lack of investigative journalism and a tendency to gloss over controversies that might paint the monarchy in a negative light. This unspoken agreement has for decades shielded the monarchy from scrutiny, allowing them to cultivate a carefully curated public image. The royal family has been able to present itself as a symbol of stability and tradition, free from the scandals and controversies that often plague other public figures. However, the times are changing. The advent of digital media and the rise of social media platforms have revolutionized the way information is disseminated and consumed. The public now has access to a multitude of sources, and the traditional media's monopoly on information is being challenged. The public is increasingly demanding transparency and accountability from institutions, and the monarchy is no exception. People are no longer content with the carefully managed narratives provided by the royal rota. They want to know the truth, even if it is uncomfortable or unflattering. The rise of social media has also given a platform to alternative voices, challenging the established narratives propagated by traditional media outlets. Independent journalists, bloggers, and social media influencers are now able to reach large audiences, often providing perspectives that differ from those of the mainstream media. The Royal Rota system, once a pillar of royal public relations, is now facing unprecedented criticism. The public is questioning the integrity of the journalists within the Rota, accusing them of being too close to the monarchy and failing to hold it accountable. Journalists are being accused of complicity in perpetuating an outdated and opaque system that benefits the monarchy at the expense of public interest. The lack of critical reporting has led to a growing distrust in the media and a perception that the press is more interested in maintaining its access than in serving the public. The recent controversy surrounding the financial dealings of the Duchy of Lancaster and the Duchy of Cornwall has brought these tensions to the forefront. Allegations of financial impropriety and a lack of transparency have raised serious questions about the management of these estates and the role of the monarchy in overseeing them. The silence of the royal rota on these issues, particularly the lack of investigative journalism into the financial affairs of the duchies, has sparked outrage and accusations of bias. Critics argue that the rota's failure to investigate these matters is indicative of a broader problem within the system. The public is demanding answers, and the royal rota finds itself at a crossroads, forced to choose between upholding a system of silence or embracing a new era of accountability. The future of the rota and its relationship with the monarchy will depend on its ability to adapt to the changing media landscape and the growing demand for transparency and truth. Omid Scobie, co-author of the best-selling biography Finding Freedom, has emerged as a vocal critic of the royal rota's silence on matters of financial accountability. Known for his insightful commentary and deep understanding of the inner workings of the British monarchy, Scobie has never shied away from addressing controversial topics. His latest critique, however, has struck a particularly sensitive nerve within the royal establishment. In a pointed tweet, Scobie called out the lack of coverage surrounding the duchies of Lancaster and Cornwall, the private estates of King Charles and Prince William respectively. These duchies, which are among the most significant sources of private income for the royal family, have often been shrouded in mystery. Scobie's tweet was not just a casual remark. It was a direct challenge to the media to do better, to dig deeper, and to bring to light the financial intricacies of these estates. These estates, which generate significant revenue, have long operated with minimal public scrutiny. The Duchy of Lancaster, for instance, provides income to the reigning monarch, while the Duchy of Cornwall supports the Prince of Wales. Despite their substantial financial contributions, the operations of these estates remain largely opaque. Questions about how the revenue is generated, how it is spent, and who ultimately benefits have lingered for years without satisfactory answers.
Scobie's tweet ignited a firestorm on social media, with many echoing his concerns about the lack of transparency surrounding the duchy's financial dealings. The tweet quickly went viral, sparking a broader conversation about the need for greater accountability within the royal family. Social media platforms were flooded with comments, retweets and discussions as people from all walks of life weighed in on the issue. The public's reaction was a clear indication that there is a growing demand for transparency and accountability from the monarchy. The public, it seemed, was hungry for information and eager to understand how these vast estates, intertwined with public funds and shrouded in historical privilege, operate in the 21st century. The debate extended beyond social media, with newspapers and television programmes picking up the story. Public protests and discussions about the monarchy's financial practices became more frequent, highlighting a shift in public sentiment. People were no longer content with the status quo, they wanted answers and they wanted change. Scobie's challenge to the royal rota was clear, break free from the shackles of deference and fulfil your duty to hold the powerful accountable. He called on journalists to rise to the occasion, to use their platforms to question and investigate, rather than simply report. The message was a rallying cry for a more robust and fearless press, one that is willing to take on the establishment and demand transparency. He urged his fellow journalists to investigate the financial operations of the duchies, to scrutinise their expenditures and to question whether the public was getting a fair deal. This call to action was not just about the duchies, it was about setting a precedent for how the media should approach all matters of public interest. Scobie emphasised the importance of thorough and unbiased reporting, encouraging journalists to dig deeper and uncover the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it might be. His call to action resonated with a public increasingly disillusioned with the monarchy's resistance to transparency. The response was overwhelming, with many people expressing their support for Scobie's stance. Public demonstrations and group discussions on transparency became more common, as people demanded more openness from the royal family. The issue of financial accountability within the monarchy had become a hot topic, and it was clear that the public was not going to let it go. Scobie's tweet served as a lightning rod, focusing attention on the uncomfortable truth that the royal family, despite its claims of modernization, continues to benefit from archaic systems of privilege and financial opacity. The tweet was a catalyst for a much-needed conversation about the role of the monarchy in modern society and the need for greater transparency. It highlighted the gap between the royal family's public image and the reality of its financial practices, prompting a re-evaluation of what it means to be a modern monarchy. The duchies of Lancaster and Cornwall are not merely historical relics. They are vast estates encompassing agricultural land, commercial property, and financial investments, making them significant economic entities. The revenue generated from these holdings provides a significant income stream for King Charles and Prince William, ensuring their financial stability. Supplementing the sovereign grant they receive from the public purse, which is funded by taxpayers. While the exact figures are shrouded in secrecy, it is estimated that the Duchy of Lancaster, which dates back to the 13th century, generates tens of millions of pounds annually for the reigning monarch. The Duchy of Cornwall, established in the 14th century, provides a similar income stream for the heir to the throne, ensuring their financial independence. These financial arrangements raise important questions about the relationship between the monarchy and public funds and how they are managed. Critics argue that the Windsor's reliance on income from these private estates, while simultaneously receiving public funding through the sovereign grant, represents a conflict of interest and ethical dilemma. Furthermore, the lack of transparency surrounding the duchy's financial dealings makes it impossible to assess whether public funds are being used appropriately or whether the Windsors are benefiting from preferential treatment in their